Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Cage Report. I'm Mike Nakanauer. That's Colton Alder. We've got a lot to talk about this week. Fall sports about to get underway for the 2024-25 school year. Um, Colton, uh, let's start off. Let's just jump right into it. You being on the cross country team, what do you expect out of this team last from from last year's state tournament run? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of turnover from last year. Zero returning varsity letterman from last year's state championship winning team, Dennis Chapman, Jacob Finney, Eli Jones, both of the Sour Twins, all of them all gone off to college. But at this point, it's going to be the sophomore class that's going to be tasked on carrying a lot of that load and bringing them back to state contention. Aaron Robles, uh, Benny Ewell, John Becker, they're all going to be tasked with putting together some good times on varsity this year. A bunch of juniors like Mark Hoffman, Sam Clutterbuck, uh, Island Cowett, Rowan Hill, they're going to be tasked on doing a lot of the same. And for the seniors, Colton Nelson, Ignatius Vogel, Jack Van Morgan, Jack Moore, maybe myself. I, <laughs> I, I don't know at this point. But, uh, yeah, we should hopefully have a good season, be in contention for – getting at least some placement at state. Yeah, obviously with the uh, retirement of Coach Tillman, uh, Coach Tejan coming in, stepping in as both now cross-country and the track and field coach, what has the what has the change been like as you've started your senior season? Yeah, I've definitely noticed quite a bit of a change. I don't know if it's because I've like moved on to more of the uh, varsity practices, but practices are a lot harder now. Um, go on for a lot longer. We do a lot more speed work a lot more like warm up and it's definitely a change but I think it ends up working out a little bit because you improve with your speed a lot easier and you know just get more mileage in and uh, that helps build up endurance as the season goes along and I'm hoping that'll help me out quite a bit and the rest of this team as well that's good to hear good to hear out of the cross country team and let's move on to tennis uh, obviously, the Class A runners-up last year only lost one senior uh, in Jack Dombrowski, but other than that, this is a lot of returning talent for this year's team. Yeah, and hopefully that leads to a lot of experience heading into state and obviously going to be a competitor for that after being the runners-up last year. Guys like Ben and Luke McGill, Matt McGill, Patrick Basilovac, Riley Shermerhorn, they're going to be some of the main players on varsity this year for the tennis team. Yeah, a lot of underclassmen in last year's team, a lot of juniors. Um, uh, and that was a team that was able to run the table and almost run the table completely, um, only losing to Lincoln East, I believe, all season long. Um, and now they're more experienced. They A lot of those guys have those varsity that varsity year under their belt. Um, I think it's going to be a very, I think, high expectations. There was high expectations going into last year. I think there should be even higher expectations going into this year. I actually talked to Luke McGill the other day. He said it's going to be a lot of the same, uh, obviously, with all the returners. Um, it's going to be a lot of the same pairings, but it's going to, obviously, it, nothing's given. Uh, they're still going to have to work for it. They're still going to have to um, put in the time. Uh, but high expectations, I think, for the tennis team. Um being runners-up last year, as we mentioned, um, and they're expected to make a run for the state title this year. Um, and then let's move on to um, what is probably going to get talked about the most on this podcast, yeah. which is football. Um, we both were able to attend the Blue-White game. A lot of takeaways, a lot of thoughts on what was pretty much our first full look at this team uh, as a full squad as they head to DeSmet on Saturday um, we both had some takeaways, I feel like. I think we can kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Let's start off with the quarterback, Tony Coniglio, starting in what is now his third year, full, not, second full third year as the um, varsity quarterback for this squad. He kind of took over halfway through the soft, his sophomore season, but now his second full season at the helm of the Junior J offense a lot, lot of expectations going into this year. I um, feel like this team is a lot more experienced than last year's team, a lot of young guys on last year's team, um, and a lot of guys who now have, as we're going to mention, 
that varsity year under their belt, which is so very important. Yeah, and kind of building on what you were saying about Tony Caniglio heading into his third year, his main issue or weak point in his game last year was struggling with decisiveness. He took a lot of sacks, struggled to get the ball out at points. In the blue-white game, he looked much more decisive. He looked a lot more confident in his throws, was able to get the ball out quickly, even though he had to move around a little bit. Overall, it looks like he's improved quite a bit from last year. The secondary is, there's some question marks regarding that with a bunch of the seniors from last year, like Zach McClay and Henry Bartholomew graduating. Uh, Jordan Eudofia is going to be tasked on being the cornerback two for this team. He didn't really play very much on varsity last year, but he's looking to step in there and make a big impact. Secondary is kind of inexperienced, I guess is the right word. Alex Costello and Vinny Saul, really the two main returners on that unit. So there's going to be some question marks on how this rather young unit adjusts to difficult varsity schedule, but there are some encouraging signs throughout the blue-white game. The offensive line is also very much improved from last year. Looked a lot better in run blocking, pass protection. So a lot of these young guys on the O-line get a year older. I mean, there's three juniors on this offensive line, and Ty Ravensborg, Aubrey Ross, and Tommy Hollinger. So definitely that additional year of experience from last year is going to help him out quite a bit. And Jacob Ruby and Angelo Walker – Returning in that two-back system that they had last year, they're both projected to take a big leap this year. Walker kind of lined up out wide at some points in the blue-white game. it be interesting to see if they kind of go with a different strategy based on that. But they both look very much improved from last year as well, and Junior Jays are hoping that they can put together some big years for them. Yeah, I was talking to some of them. I was talking to Jacob Ruby specifically. He was saying that the uh, two-back system is going to look similar and different from last year. A lot of times it's going to be one of them lined up uh, behind the quarterback or next to the quarterback um, in the backfield. Uh, and other time, and other times it'll be a guy in the backfield and then the other guy being in the slot. Uh, as you mentioned with Walker, you saw him a lot in the slot um, during the blue-white game. That seems to be a point of emphasis for this offense. Obviously, with the departure of Coach Fife, um, it's an as Coach Yonk has said, it's going to be a new look offense. He said maybe not, maybe not to the people in the stands, but definitely to the people on the team and the people surrounding the team. Uh, there's going to be some noticeable differences with the offense. The run game is as important as ever. Um, so that two back system is definitely going to be very important um, for this team's success uh, going throughout the season. And um, speaking on Coach Yonk, uh, along with Tony Coniglio and Sean Skridlack, they were on After Hours the other day, uh, the 1620 The Zone podcast. Uh, I listened to it, and there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, a lot of good takeaways, a lot of promise, a lot of promising remarks from both from all three guys. Um, the one of the most interesting things I heard was Coach Yonk used the term uh, varsity scar tissue. Um, last year's team, four and six, but. Um, as the guys over there at 1620 said, um, a couple of plays go a little bit differently in the Bell West and the Gretna games. That record is vastly different than it was. Yeah, and maybe they would have had a better chance at making a run at state if they weren't matched up with Westside immediately first round. It's kind of the luck of the draw that is going to impact them this year a little bit too. Got a lot of tough games. Smet and Westside, obviously the two main opponents on their schedule, but they've got some tough games outside of that, such as Papillion and Millward West. But as long as they, you know, stay focused and get those breaks in those big moments, it's a team that could have the potential to really make a deep run at state this year. Yeah, Coach Yonk was talking about how much stronger of a bond this team has grown over the offseason. He was also saying that before the summer started, he talked to his guys, he talked to his team about how important it was for their hard work throughout the summer. And he said that his team really 
respond to that call. They really stepped it up during the offseason. He said that this team is – they worked very hard. Um, they got a lot faster, a lot stronger, a lot quicker. Um, and going back to it, he just said how close this team is, how much chemistry they've built, um, and they've really – embrace the we over me uh mantra that this team tries to hold to themselves to yeah and we saw that a lot in the blue white game obviously the players looking a lot quicker and stronger than last year and kind of the way that they were doing things there didn't seem to be like a lot of uncertainty between the players they all seem to be like a collective group that is all committed to the same goal, and I think that's really going to help him out this year. And let's move on to the other parts of that interview. Tony Coniglio, we're going to head back to Tony Coniglio. Um, One of the things I noticed, one of the things we both noticed throughout of last year was his ability to extend plays and um, able to maneuver his way around and outside of the pocket. Um, In the blue-white game, we we, we both thought that he, it seems that he improved on that, and um, he got talked. That got talked about on the on the podcast. He said that he's just been working with um, uh, new coach Noah Vedral, uh, who just came in. Obviously, he's saying he was saying with his experience at a at a program like Rutgers, um, a lot of new drills that he implemented. Um, he was able to even further improve his abilities to stay outside. To uh, as they the quote the the term they used was climb the pocket. Um, and he also said that playing third base over the summer really helped with his footwork. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how that has improved his game because we both saw that during the blue-white game. Yeah, he uh, definitely has improved a lot on that. Another thing he kind of mentioned was that the best part of the prep offense this year is the freedom he's kind of given. Obviously, a new system changing up a little bit from last year. I think in a situation where he's given a lot more freedom we get to see more of like Tony Coniglio's strong points and like how he's able to you know as you mentioned extend those plays and I mean that'll definitely help him out this year as he tries to put together a good senior season and lead the junior Jays to a lot of success yeah he was also talking about how uh the legacy part of it in his family, bo- both in his family and um, just the past generations of prep football. Obviously, he said the uh, seeing the banner in the in the Hyder Center with all the all the all the years of state championships. Uh, it's he says it's both a pressure and a privilege. Um, he says he feels privileged to uh, be able to play for such a storied program, but it also obviously comes with a lot of its own pressure. You know, trying to uh, carry on that legacy. No kidding. I mean. Obviously, the legacy here at Prep is one of the best, if not the best, in the state of Nebraska. A lot of success in basically every sport, and this team has the honor to try and carry that on. Yeah, winning this program in in all of Nebraska high school football. Uh, Last thing about Tony was he talked about uh, his uh, the higher arc on his ball. He's obviously playing baseball. He's able to. uh, He has a pretty good arm. Um, and he's saying that putting uh, putting extra air on his ball, putting it more arc on his ball, is able to uh, help him push the ball further downfield. Um, how do you think you saw that in the blue-white game? I mean, I saw it a lot in the blue-white game with some of his throws downfield as he escaped the pocket. He was able to get the ball up high and in a situation where only his receiver could catch it. You know, he made a lot of great plays with that, and... I mean, kind of saw it last year, too. I mean, the Central game last year, that throw he had on that wheel route to Jacob Ruby for a touchdown, I think was his best throw all of last year. Put that ball perfectly on a dime, just past a defender, and got that touchdown. So I think he's going to be able to do that a lot more effectively this year as well. I mean, getting a lot more time with the offensive line improving as well. And his arm looked a lot better than it was last year in the blue-white game. So he's definitely going to have a lot more opportunities. Yeah, the thing that we've been stressing on is just his ability. You touched on it right at the beginning was um, he looks a lot more decisive. He's a lot more quick with his decision-making. I saw a lot of slant routes where the ball was out before you could even even blink. Um, So I was really promising to see stuff like that. Uh, And then let's move to the other side of the ball. 
Sean Skridlak got interviewed as well. Um, he was talking about just how much both him and the entire defensive line has improved over the summer, uh, most specifically his pass rushing. He said that he's been working on his drills, um, and he's just been trying to get more after the quarterback. Um, what do you expect out of this defensive line? Uh, obviously, with Elijah Ahanti moving from the offensive side, offensive line to the defensive line, um, how much of a difference do you expect this defensive line to make this year? I think if this defense is going to be as elite as it has been in past years, this defensive line is going to be the most impactful unit for them. Obviously, Elijah Ahanti moving to the other side of the ball, playing defensive tackle now. Sean Skridlak returning. Jake Brock, the sophomore, looking to make a bigger impact in this season. A bunch of other guys that have also made an impact on this defensive line for varsity in the past. If this defense is going to be great, this defensive line is going to need to step up, and I expect them to be the best unit on this team. And then he also talked about um, the Lindenwood Mega Camp, which is quite the event if you've seen some of the videos. Um, he just talked about how um, how much of a good experience it was, but he also said how much of how much pressure it was. So many recruits, so many coaches, so many eyes on you uh, throughout the entire event. Um, he's saying he was saying just how much. Um, how much of it just feels like you're kind of under pressure the entire time because you don't get with how many people there are there you don't get that many opportunities to prove yourself yeah and he mentioned those one-on-ones as being the main opportunity to you know prove yourself to these coaches obviously there's a lot of great talent on both sides of the ball and if you can establish yourself as the winner of each of your matchups and put together a lot of really promising plays that gets yourself noticed and really helps you out in the long run with recruiting. And then last thing, going back to the D-line, Skridlak mentioned how the defensive line as a whole, uh, which is reminiscent of what Coach Yonk was talking about, their team chemistry has improved so much, which I thought was incredibly promising to hear. Um, as a team, as like, Someone who's been a part of team sports for my entire life, uh, and anyone who's been a part of any sort of team sports can can, and I'm probably sure you can with cross country. Um, anyone can can vouch for is the importance of your relationships with the rest of the team. Yeah, and when you're like in a good relationship with the rest of your teammates, that definitely like makes you more enthusiastic to go out there and compete for your guys. Like definitely gives you that extra motivation to keep going. And I think it's definitely helped this defensive line put in a lot more work in the off season as well. Just like knowing that you have to be there for your teammates, but you also kind of want to beat them out so you get more opportunities as well. Um, that's definitely a lot of motivation for them. And I think it's definitely helped like with, what Coach Yonk said, this team worked hard a lot in the offseason. I think that chemistry is a big reason why. Yeah, the, yeah, the competition, uh, it really helps because it, it's, it's, um, it's forcing everyone to get better. Um, it's forcing everyone to um, improve themselves, but by improving themselves, improve the team. Uh, and with a team, and obviously team chemistry is important, but I, well, when it comes to a game like football, when you have more like isolated groups of 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 specialty players when it comes to the defensive line, you have the linebackers, you have the secondary, um, staying tightly knit, especially with the guys who are right next to you. Whenever you're a down lineman on the, on the defense, those are the guys that you're, 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 you're in a fight. You're in the, uh, you're in the battle right alongside. So, um, I was, that was a lot of, a lot of promising things to hear from, from Skridlak, um, along with the defense. Um, and I had, going to go ahead and ask uh do you have a uh, prediction and last thing last thing what's your schedule prediction for this year my prediction right now I'm going to predict seven and two I think it's going to be all wins outside of the DeSmet and West Side games in my opinion uh for state I don't know what seating that would put them at um but I think this team has a genuine shot to 
really contend for a deep state run this year. I do too. I do too. I was same same boat as you. Six and three, seven and two. Um, the Desmet game, obviously, a really really tough task to uh, start your year out. But I think it's going to be, as we've seen over the years, this prep team always with a tough schedule to start things out. I mean, last two years they've had. Bell West, West Side, and Gretna all in their first four weeks. And even Millard North last year, who was, uh, they were improving. Uh, they gave them a, a tough a tough task up to the last play. Um, and this is the prep team that started one and four, as we said. Um, that record um, could have been a lot different, as we mentioned, but uh, different, definitely a different look for schedule this year. New district pairings for everyone, um, with West Side, Papio, Central all being in the same division, all, all being the same district. It's definitely going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting race. Um, West Side expected to um, run the table in the district and most likely get the top seed in in the district and the uh, eventual state berth. But top two each district for for Class A football. So it's obviously going to be a race to try and see uh, who's able to clinch. Um, but yeah, I think six and three, seven and two, um, is a is a very reasonable uh, expectation for this team. Uh, but I'm expecting a lot. I'm excited to uh, follow this team throughout the year, um, and I'm sure you are as well. Um, but that should do it for our first episode of Cage Report. We thank you so much. Remember, 1 p.m. Saturday, Dismet. Uh, we will try and get the link out to you. Should be in the bio of the YouTube video. But other than that, I'm Mike Nockenauer. That's Colton Alder. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your week and enjoy the long weekend.